All right, hey, how y'all doing? I'm about to explain what happens when you have South Node K2 in your second house and North Node Rahu in your eighth house. So let me start off by explaining what is the second house. The second house represents the family that you came from. It represents your wealth, how you might handle money, and might show the sh sort of show how you might go about making money. But ultimately, it just represents the family that you came from, um, how you might handle wealth, how you might make wealth. The second house also represents your speech because it rules the throat. And it's a house originally ruled by Taurus and Venus. And now I'm about to explain the eighth house, which is the exact opposite of the second house. The eighth house, it represents your in-laws. It represents um, my... The wealth that you might be able to gain through marriage, through union, and how you might handle your spouse's money. It represents sex, death, the cult, and mysticism, and hidden taboo knowledge. Um, Those are just about the main things associated with the 8th house. And then we'll go and explain K2 for the millionth time. K2 South Node represents past life experiences, things that we experienced and dealt with in a previous past life. But because we experienced them already in the last life or several lifetimes, we'll tend to find um, not as much fun and pleasure in experiencing them again in this lifetime. And K2 sort of just wants to separate us from the things in association to the house that is sitting in. It wants to give us moksha. Moksha means liberation. And Rahu, the North Node, it is a head without a body. It want, it amplifies the traits associated with the house that it's sitting in. And it because it doesn't have a body, it doesn't have a stomach, it has an insatiable desire and thirst that it cannot quench when it comes to the things in association with the house that it is sitting in. And because it's an area that we haven't really explored and experienced that much in the, in, over the course of several past lifetimes, it is an area that will tend to make mistakes and mess up a lot in. So what happens when you put the self node into the second house of the family, the family that you come from? One thing that we can see is that for one, these people can have real bad anger or a real bad, terrible potty mouth. Why? Because for me personally, when I look at the self node K2 in certain houses, but maybe specifically this one, um, it's like a wherever it's sort of at is an area where you tend to not really think because it doesn't have a head the k2 the south node is just the breast it's just a body without a head it's a headless body so without the head it cannot think logically it can't make logical decisions it moves intuitively yeah it sort of just moves intuitively or move like a wild animal caged in a caged a wild caged animal there's a lot of things to see how your south node and north node will operate but these are one of the ways that it can operate your south node can just make you get angry and you just say the wildest disrespectful things to people in in your family um you just get mad and you just you just you just snap you just have a terrible mouth and it just cuts and like i said self know it wants to sort of separate you from the area in the house that it sits in or it just gives you displeasure in that area so these people, they can just have a distant relationship with the family that they came from, you know, their parents and their siblings or whatever, or they could have cursed out their family a lot. And just the constant cursing out of the family can separate them from their family and whatnot. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that could just manifest, but ultimately we'll see some type of separation, more dysfunction than usual, a lot of Ver a, a huge tendency to just be verbal, verbal outlashes, just be disrespectful and cuss out family and whatnot. And the way that, and we also see that in a previous lifetime, that since this second house also deals with wealth, these people, you know, they've experienced and have experience in making money. You have experience from previous past life in how to manage wealth and deal with it. And you already experienced, you already experienced being good to your family or 
having a good relationship with the family. So like I said, in this lifetime, it sort of gets stripped. It sort of gets um, ripped apart. Um, and now we're going to go to your north node, the Rahu in the eighth house. So since this house represents a multitude of things, I'll probably be staying in this area for a while. One of the things that we can see with the North Node Rahu in the eighth house is that these people will be interested or can tend to be interested in wanting to learn about the occult, astrology, tarot, Reiki healing, all those type of things, hidden things of hidden knowledge. They will want to explore and learn all those things. But they can tend to mess up and teach the wrong things to people because it has, as it has no experience in that area. It's curious about that area, but it has no experience in the mysticism and all that stuff of life. So these people, they can initially or can be prone to, they can dive into tarot and tell the wrong things. Even though I'm pretty sure most people, they make mistakes when they try something new. Um, these people, they could just... Be an astrologer and they just be impatient and rash and make just reckless amateur predictions or whatnot with this placement. Unless, you know, the North Node, the Rahu, is sitting in the same house with Jupiter, or if it's in the sign of Pisces or Sagittarius, then Jupiter will help the Rahu, it will help your North Node, and sort of put you on the right path to learning the things and association to the Eighth House. But if not, we can see these people just be prone to want to learn the Eighth House, but they'll make mistakes and they can make mistakes or just preach and teach the wrong things in association with that stuff. They can misuse it either willingly or unwillingly. I mean, either knowingly or unknowingly. They can misuse the things in a relation to the eighth house um another thing that you can see with these people is that they could desire or they could initially at first maybe mess up their partner's wealth their partner's um finances they get into a relationship where they get married and they could just really just maybe get get them in debt possibly you know um they could end up in debt Unless they use that South Node, they use that past life experience of dealing with the family and dealing with wealth, then they can use the experience of dealing with wealth to properly manage joint assets, joint finances. But one thing we just see with Rahu possibly over here is that these people can tend to cause damage initially and mismanage and handle their partners and spouses and their in-laws maybe wealth or maybe because the eighth house since it represents death you know you can gain death i mean you can gain wealth through death you know through wills through inheritance so these people it's possible for them to inherit money through death and they'll just misuse it possibly these are just broad examples there's a lot of things that can happen with rahu and k2 in the eighth house but i like to tell both sides the negative and the positive um Another thing with people who have Rahu, the North Node, in the eighth house is that these people can have to tend to have a negative or distant relationship with their in-laws, with their, you know, their their partner's family or your longtime boyfriend, girlfriend's family. There could be distance or tension with them. It's possible that there could be distance and tension with them due to you possibly having an interest in the occult. They could be like, oh, he or she, they into that stuff. I don't know why he or her is dealing with that person. We didn't raise them to be like that. And I don't want to see that person. So something like that can possibly happen with a person who is holding the Rahu and the eighth house. Um, yeah. And let's go back real quick to the south node and the second house. I said that these people likely had great experience in the past with handling finances and handling and dealing with their family. But it's like I said, our soul knows who we are, but when we're reborn and come into a body, we sort of forget who we are. And our South Node is like an example 
of the quote. If you do not know your history, you do not know your past, then you'll be doomed to repeat it. And these people, because, you know, they got to find out how to deal with matters with the second house again, they could tend to, like I said, just be very bad, terrible relationship with the family, with the family they come from, very likely. And these people could just be real bad with handling and managing their finances, possibly. And they'll want to seek finances through their partners or through other people. They want to make finances from other part people and their and their partners and whatnot. Um, but like I said, once they um, sort of reactivate and that that K two maybe they go through um, the time period a Dasha a Mahadasha or Antar Dasha, which I'll get to eventually sometime with YouTube videos when they go through that time period of K two possibly. Um, maybe they'll find out and realize the month of how to handle matters in relation to the second house. And then they'll use that South Node, that past life experience to help them in the eighth. So quick little recap for, um, people who have the South Node in the eighth house, in, in the second house, if, if they figured out how to handle their wealth and how to deal with the family, then we can see in the eighth house of Rahu, with experience with them dealing with their own family, these people can grow to be very good in dealing with their in-laws and know how to handle the budget and finances of the marriage, of the of the union and whatnot. Um, as far as dumb being able to properly do things and learn things and go about doing things the right way it comes to astrology and the cult, we would have to see the sign, the nakshatra, the planet that Rahu is sitting with. We just can't see that from here. Um, and yeah, South and if South Node K2, if these people are showing more so the traits of, like I said, the violent verbal outbursts and not really knowing how to manage their own wealth, um, then we can see that Rahu will likely, he will um, make you just terrible with managing the finances and the wealth of the relationship, of the union. And these people can just possibly just be terrible with interacting and dealing with the in-laws. Now, I think it's very possible since the eighth house is a significator, it can represent death because it's a house represented by, originally ruled by Mars and Scorpio and Scorpio rep rules the sexual organ and Mars can represent like the sexual energy similar to Venus. So with Rahu sitting here, we can see these people could just have a huge sexual appetite, huge sexual desires, can really want to explore and try new things sexually. Um, and that is all I have to say in regards to these two placements.